Hello, on today's episode of Another History of the World, we're going to be talking about uh, Jim Crow and desegregation. After the end of Reconstruction in 1877 began the Jim Crow era until the 1950s civil rights movements. To fight the laws um, that enforced racial segregation in the American South, the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, or the NAACP, was founded in 1909. One of the crucial cases was Plessy v. Ferguson, which gave us the phrase separate but equal and upheld ra state racial segregation laws for public facilities. Despite evidence to the contrary, the court said that these laws did not violate the 14th Amendment, which gave equal rights to all persons born and naturalised in the United States, including African Americans. So who was Jim Crow? Jim Crow was a fictional character in a show of representation of a black man, an exaggerated, stereotypical, racist representation carried out by a white man on stage in blackface in the early part of the 19th century. And by 1838, the term Jim Crow had become a racial epithet. So what was Jim Crow? Democrats in Southern US state legislatures um, passed laws requiring the separation of whites from persons of color in public transportation and schools. And so segregation was extended to parks, cemeteries, theaters, restaurants, and it also extended to voting. So they imposed um, bias reading requirements, stringent property qualifications and complex poll taxes. And so we see a decrease in the number of black people enrolled to vote during this period. Services and facilities for black people were consistently inferior, underfunded, and more inconvenient if they even did exist at all. Segregation law was law in the South and contributed to the Great Migration to the North and the West, but segregation also was also practiced in the Northern United States through discriminatory housing policies and job discrimination. But Jim Crow wasn't just about laws, it was an all-encompassing system that involved political practices, economic practices, social and cultural practices, so some of that was about legal things but some of it wasn't. And the Jim Crow laws were enforced by a system of intimidation tactics which involved violence and lynchings against black people and the exploitation of black bodies and that was especially perpetrated by the Ku Klux Klan. The Jim Crow era saw the emergence of a hugely damaging stereotype, black people as savage, immoral brutes. This was perpetrated by books like Gone with the Wind, films like Birth of a Nation, which the NAACP actually campaigned against. And this ideology of the so-called Lost Cause advocates the belief that the cause of the Confederate States during the American Civil War was a just and heroic one. It also advocates that slavery was just and moral because enslaved people were happy and it also brought economic prosperity. Jim Crow laws built on the idea of the Old South as a genteel society of gallant aristocrats, a lost world shattered by Northern violence, even if this was all blatantly untrue. And these ide ideologies were not new. They came from Reconstruction after the bitterness of the Civil War and the myth-making and memorialization of the heroes of war. Desegregation did not happen overnight. It first used executive power with President Harry Truman integrating the armed forces in 1948. And then segregation finally reached the courts. They ruled on schools in Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, but they also ruled on employment practices, restaurants and interracial marriages in Loving v. Virginia. And this culminated in the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act. And we have to remember that black people really did fight against Jim Crow. Many of them were urban, more educated than their parents, and often trained militarily, and thought some, like the NAACP, just weren't doing enough. So black people were forced to defend themselves from police and citizens, but they also led personal and collective insurrections. And the laws and extreme violence had its de desired effect. Black people lived in fear every day, and were made to feel inferior to white people. And so it was often subtle, not explicit. So the Jim Crow era was not just about laws, and we've seen how imperative ideology is to the success of economic and social policies.